perfectly straight golf shot. What is it exactly? Well, I just hit one. Well, I missed my target by four feet with a, an eight iron from about 170 yards, so it's not too bad. But the key is what makes up a straight golf shot? So many golfers don't understand all of the parameters that go into hitting a ball at your target. There's a million different minute variations that can cause that. And so when you're looking at data using a flight scope like we're using here, you really get down to tenths of a degree that really make a big difference because it's not just how you swing the club and, and you know, the path and the plane, but also where you hit the ball in the face has a huge impact on where the ball is going to go. And a lot of people don't realize that. Just by missing the sweet spot on a driver, for instance, by a half inch can send the ball 20 or 30 yards offline, even if your path and plane are perfectly square. So golf requires a tremendous amount of precision when it comes to being very, very precise and accurate with your golf shots. You have to use a launch monitor to get that last little bit of tour level, tour caliber ball striking. And so I want to talk about the shot that I just hit. It's the first eight iron I hit all morning. But with RSD stuff, you don't have to warm up that much, right? Body should be nice and good to go, even after a broken neck and all the stuff I've had going on. I don't have to work on my swing anymore to hit a ball perfectly straight because I've built in the movement patterns that I need to get the club to do what I want it to do. And it all starts from the ground up. And that's why I'm standing on uh, this body track. It's just a mat, but it's actually got pressure sensors in it that directly integrate with the flight scope that shows exactly where my weight shift is. And that's really what we're going to talk about here because weight shift is the most unappreciated, underappreciated part a swing a golf club properly and getting a square path and plane. So yeah, I'm talking about path and plane. Well, how does my weight shift affect that? Well, that is the key because the weight shift not only gets everything moving going back, but it also is the primary key for getting the swing going the other direction. The transition of the swing, which is going to set the plane and path of the club, is dictated by your weight shift. And so most golfers, when we put them on the body track, they don't shift their weight nearly enough. And I want to show you just how much, even with an 8-iron, how much I shifted my weight. So let's take a look at the stats. I'm going to take you to the flight scope screen now. We're going to take a look at my weight shift, the path, and the plane, and, and the result of this shot. A bit more about the anatomy of them, and more importantly, what you have to do to create more straight shots. Because really, at the end of the day, it's what we want. We want to be able to hit the ball and know where it's actually going to go for a change. So here is an example of the shot that I hit on video earlier. Uh, and I want to talk about what physical things, what the mechanics are that create that straight shot. And then we're going to talk about the body things that have to happen in order for this shot to, to occur. So let's look at a couple things here. The, the big things when we're looking at flight scope data or track my data or any type of data out there on a launch monitor, there are really, there's a lot of numbers that will confuse you like horizontal swing plane and vertical swing plane. And you don't really need to worry about a lot of these things. But what I do want you to understand and focus on are really the critical things. And, and I'm going to walk through just kind of briefly here kind of the nuts and bolts of track, uh, uh, launch monitor data that you would need to familiarize yourself with. With One, this is carry distance. Don't get caught up in this stuff too much because everybody does. And this was a range ball that I hit, which generally goes about 8 to 10% shorter than a normal ball. Uh, so in this case, this was an 8 iron for me, carried 164 yards. Normally I carry one about 175, maybe 180 yards. So don't get too worried about uh, launch monitor data when you're using range balls especially because the data will be a little bit skewed, spin rates tend to be a little bit higher and so on. But these numbers, the big one we want to focus on here is the lateral. So that's just how far left or right, in this case right, of the target that I hit the ball. This could have been you know, 1.6 yards, it's only four and a half, five feet right of the target. So that could have been just a simple alignment thing or you know, at 165 yards, that's still, you'd be very happy to hit an eight iron to five feet. So not too worried about that. Club head speed, uh, 89 miles an hour. Pretty normal, uh, generally a little bit faster than that, but a typical tour pro with you know an 8-iron in their hand is going to be in that 89, 90, 88 mile an hour kind of range. Smash factor, this is a big number that you guys see a lot that is really generally equated to the driver. And so you generally with the driver you want to see a 1.5 smash factor. 
uh, and with an iron, you won't see that because of the angle of the club face. It's not as flat as a driver, so you're not going to see numbers that high. So 1.35 is pretty good, pretty normal. Uh, spin rates, 5,800 RPM. But now here's the stuff that we really want to focus on and, and talk about. So spin axis, 0.2 degrees to the right. And what that means is that the ball was tilted to spin. Its axis that it's spinning around is tilted a little bit to the right which means that technically this ball was cutting a little bit, but at 0.2 degrees, it's a negligible, negligible amount, not visible to the naked eye, not even hardly visible here on the screen. You can see just a tiny little bit of trace of uh, right, uh, red line there at the end of the ball flight, but it's imperceptible. So we'll consider that effectively zero. But here's the key. What created that spin axis is my path and face angle. Well, the first number we can see here is the club path at 0.2 degrees to the right. That means that I was swinging 0.2 degrees into out. And at 0.2 degrees, that is a negligible amount. So generally what I want to see with all of my better players or any player for that matter who's trying to get as good as they can, we never want to see that path more than a degree and a half, two degrees max into out or out to in, depending on the ball flight preference that you're looking for. The closer we get to zero, which two tenths of a degree here is pretty much effectively zero, the better, because that's the less that you're going to have discrepancy in your ball flight, assuming the club face is matching up with that path when you hit great shots and bad shots. Obviously, golf is really a, largely a game of failure and managing misses. So if your path is pretty close to what I call zeroed out, which in this case is very, very close, then you're going to be in the ballpark that even if you miss a shot, hit it a little off the heel, it's going to make it cut a little bit, face is a little bit open, the ball fly is going to tend to be much straighter than when you have a severely end out pass. So when you're looking at these numbers, your club path, you want to make certain it's always well within two degrees. The closer to zero, the better. If you're outside of two degrees, then we need to talk a lot more about what we need to do to get you swinging correctly because that's a major problem. You'll never be able to really consistently know where that ball is going to go and you won't be able to control the starting line of that ball very effectively, very consistently. So club path, 0.2 degrees, it's good. Uh, the big thing I wanted to see next is face angle, which isn't on here, so we can look at that from a different view. So now we can look at our face to path. And now, now note that this is face to path, and that means the club face angle was 0.4 degrees open, or 0.4 degrees to the right, to my path, which was also to the right. Now, generally my ball flight is straight to a subtle little draw. This club face was just a little bit open to my path, so that's why it was basically a straight shot, uh, because the numbers are so small or so close to zero that it effectively was a straight shot, or technically had a tiny amount of cut on it, maybe a couple of feet at the most. So in general, what you want to look at here is how these two numbers match up to each other. If your path is severely in to out or out to in, and then this, what you're going to tend to see is that this number is also going to be a high number. The closer you get both of these numbers to zero, the easier your golf becomes. But when you have a path that's say four degrees into out, and then a face to path that is three degrees open, well that ball is going to start right and go further right, unless you hit it way off the toe. So these are the key numbers that you generally want to focus on when you're working on getting the ball to start online and stay online. And the key to doing those things is what I've talked about and working through the RST five-step system and it all starts with weight shift. If you do not shift your weight, what you're going to tend to see here is that your plane and path is going to tend to be really, really steep. And so I'll exaggerate it. And this is kind of what your swing plane looks like when you don't shift your weight. It would look like it's coming way over the top or out to in. And this all comes from too much right arm movement early in the swing, too much right arm dominance, and not shifting your weight. Weight shift is a shallowing move. It allows the swing path and the plane to drop and shallow out. And so when you see a path going way out across the ball like this and the ball hitting the big banana slice, the first thing you've got to focus on is getting your weight shifted correctly. So that's the key that I want to emphasize here is that most people tend to swing like this, swing way over the top and hit this big banana pull slice. And if you want to get the club path zeroed out or start coming back close to square or even a little bit into out if you want to hit a nice draw, you must focus on getting your weight shifted correctly and it's got to be the first move you do to start the downswing.
Okay, so I want to do a quick little talk about uh, weight shift here. As I mentioned earlier that I was going to talk about this, and what I want to really focus on are two key things. One, people tend to not shift enough going back. They're so terribly afraid that they're going to top it or, or not get back to the ball and chunk it or whatever it may be. And the reality is to help you shift back to the lead leg, you need to shift into the right leg. It gives you momentum to help you move the other way. So if you're, if you're really just locking yourself in concrete, I wanna show you how much I actually shift my weight and the amount of weight that you saw in the video of me hitting the shot at the beginning. It's quite a lot. Going back, you're actually gonna see 84% of my weight is on my right leg as I get to the top of the backswing or before I finish the top of the backswing. Now from here, I'm gonna make a quick move and start moving all the way back to the left and you'll see by the time I get back to impact, I'm about 75%. But the key here is I make a concerted effort to get to the right immediately off the ball. I'm gonna make a big shift back to the right. It helps me shift back to the left. But if you don't move in one direction, it's hard to move to the other. And so many people feel like they, they don't wanna move in the golf swing, but movement is the golf swing. It's all about how you move. And so when you start trying to minimize too many moving parts by not moving at all, you create a whole nother set of problems. If you don't use your legs going back, you're gonna be forced to just use your arms on the way down. So it's really, really key that you focus on making a good load into the right side to make sure it's easier for you to get back to the left. Okay guys, so we're finally ready for this unveiling of the rotary swing five-step system. And yes, it starts with weight shift. And that may seem kind of strange to many of you, but I'm gonna to explain to you why it is one of the most important fundamentals of the golf swing and why you must start with it first before you worry about anything else and trying to master the golf swing. So what does the weight shift do? And specifically what we're really talking about is weight shift during the downswing and transition, but it's just as important during the backswing, but I'm gonna primarily focus on the downswing stuff here. So in the downswing, what does weight shift really do? Well, it does several things. The first thing that it does is it helps you change the direction of the club. When you start swinging the club back, it's got a lot of momentum and it's going back this way. And at the top of the swing, you want it to start going this way because it's got to get back down to the ball. So in doing that, you have a few options available to you. You can take your shoulders and spin them from the top. That generally doesn't work out very well unless you want to come over the top and hit a big banana slice. You can take your arms and pull the club down really hard, but then you're just using your arms to power the swing and taking out your whole trunk. Or you can use your arms and hands and throw the club at the top and lose all your lag. Of course, none of those things are very ideal. But one way or the other, you have to change the momentum of the club going this way back this way. The most efficient way to do that, shift your weight. As I'm going this way and I start shifting my weight back to the left and start to unwind my hips a little bit, that changes the direction of the club without me having to use my arms and hands. In fact, my arms and hands can stay very relaxed and relatively passive. What that allows me to do is store energy in them. Remember, that's one of your primary objectives in the swing is to create and maintain lag. Your job is to preserve lag. And if you're pushing against the shaft with your arms and hands at the top, you're doing the exact opposite of preserving lag. You're getting rid of it. Weight shift allows you to preserve lag. It allows you to keep your arms in reserve so that you don't have to fire them from the top and you allow them to release later in the swing when it really matters and where you want speed. So this one little move of just shifting back to the left changes the momentum and direction of the club while allowing your arms to remain relaxed. We're gonna remember my dump truck and drag racer video, the arms of the drag racer, but they need to get brought to the track in the trailer first because they don't have that much fuel. They burn a bunch of fuel in a short period of time. They don't, they're really, really fast, but they can't travel very far. The dump truck needs to pull them all the way back over there. Lots of torque, big, heavy movement. So your hands, we need to leave them in reserve. Second thing it does, and I just I had highlighted on it, is it allows you to create lag. Your job in the swing is not to set your wrists and try to create lag like this, because all you're doing is creating a lot of tension and your body uses tension as a signal to release it. So of course you create a lot of tension by setting your wrists really early. What's the first thing you're gonna wanna do at the top of your swing? 